The College of Engineering at the University of Florida is one of the ten largest colleges of engineering in the country by enrollment. It is the second largest college by enrollment on the University of Florida campus. It's one of the most comprehensive colleges in the country. We cover virtually every discipline. Our students are known for uh, the quality of the work that they do after they graduate and also for their diversity. We tend to be a more diverse college than the national average. We're also an extremely inventive college. We produce startups at four times the national average per research dollar invested and inventions at twice the national average per research dollar invested. We are engaged in one of the most exciting periods in our college's history. The state of Florida has decided to invest in making the University of Florida a preeminent institution and the College of Engineering is a very important part of that. We're going to be hiring 30 faculty over the next six months in areas of critical importance to the future of our country and our state. These areas include such things as renewable energy, advanced manufacturing, resilient coastal communities, autonomous systems, neural engineering, cellular engineering, all the areas where engineering can make a difference in the way we live. The interest in renewable energy stems from the fact that it's one of society's greatest problems that we're taking on right now is how to supply the energy to a growing country. Um, the economy is very important and driven by energy, available energy, low cost energy. As a mechanical and engineering discipline, energy falls under our, our uh, sphere of influence, if you will, and it brings us, it allows our faculty to take on and solve uh, energy problems in a very successful manner. We have uh, dramatically increased our research service centers, which are shared facilities that faculty across not just our college but across campus can utilize as well. The Nanoscale Research Facility is a state-of-the-art facility that has a 7,500 square foot clean room. It's class 100, class 1,000, depending on the areas. We support micro nano fabrication uh, for all researchers at the University of Florida, College of Engineering, uh, the different departments, and also outside the University of Florida. One of the pieces of instrumentation that we have at the Nanoscale Research Facility is a state-of-the-art focused ion beam lithography tool that does not use gallium ions as a source. This tool is not found in anywhere else in the world except for here. It's very unique and it's accessible to all the researchers in our facility. Researchers who come in to create devices on the nanometer and, and micron scale use our different tools for patterning, for film deposition, for material etching, uh, they create all kinds of devices from um, mechanical electronic devices to DNA sequencers to micro fuel cells. The whole gambit of micro nano fabrication and devices are created here. The Saeed Moganam's research group at the University of Florida uses our facility, the patterning, lithography, the etching, and the deposition techniques to create micro heat exchangers and micro fuel cells. Uh, for miniaturization for different applications. When we come to Saeed's research, he's working in the intersection of advanced manufacturing, advanced materials, mechanical engineering, heat and mass transport. And he's taking that intersection of skills to really tackle these critical needs in renewable energy to make things, processes more efficient. And so he's really driving that science and driving that engineering to make, I think, a really large impact on the energy needs of this country. My uh, research is focused on science of transport at micro, nano, and molecular scale, and its uh, applications in environmental and energy systems. We have shown that through uh, better understanding of the transport processes, as well as implementation of micro and nano structures, we can develop better systems. An example application of these systems is an absorption cycle that can be used in buildings for heating, cooling, and dehumidification. Uh, slow uh, transport processes in the existing systems, that is a 50 years old technology, uh, results in increased size and cost. We have shown that using nanofibrous membranes, we can constrain the absorbent of the system, and using microstructures, we can mix the absorbent such that the absorption rate can be increased by three to four times over what can be achieved in the existing technology. In another study, we have been able to uh, significantly push a limit in boiling heat transfer known as critical heat flux. Increasing the heat critical heat flux has been a century-old challenge. Uh, the heat critical heat flux happens when significant uh, number of bubbles are generated as a result of phase change on a heat transfer surface uh, that prevents rewetting of the surface. Uh, we have been able to show that if we properly implement hydrophobic and hydrophilic nanostructures and microstructures over the surface, we can scavenge the bubbles from the surface such that the surface can be readily uh, revetted. And uh, our data shows that we can achieve performance an order of magnitude 
above what has been demonstrated over the past few decades. In another research, we are trying to gain a better understanding of transport of ions and molecules through sub-nanometer pores in graphene oxide membranes. We think that if we understand this process better, we might be able to develop better membranes for fuel cells and water purification applications. I think when we look at these problems, energy, um, advanced manufacturing, there are huge problems right now in society. We need energy, we need cheap energy, we need to be competitive nationally in manufacturing. So these problems are of paramount importance to the United States and they are natural problems in the area of mechanical engineering. So we are the discipline that's supposed to tackle those problems and take them on.